Hi, good morning. So happy with you again today. So I'm going to ask you a question. How many of you ever hoped for something? I think right now a lot of us are hoping that school opens up in the fall. Um, maybe you are hoping that when Disney World opens up that you're able to go on a family vacation to Disney. Or maybe there's a special item you want for your birthday, so you hope that you get that for your birthday, right? Sometimes it's those wishes that we want um, to come true. And I want to share a story with you um, about one of my really big hopes that I had. So it was back in 1998, so about 20 years ago, um, the Minnesota Vikings had a 15-win season going there were only three other teams at that time that had won that many games. Um, they were the Central Division champs. They were the favorites to win the entire Super Bowl. And uh, Gary Anderson, our field goal extra point kicker, had a perfect season going. 40 plus um, field goals or extra points he had not missed. Um, so here we are in a game. Next game, if we win this one, we go to the Super Bowl. So we are up by seven in the fourth quarter and we have a field goal attempt. So Gary Anderson, the ball is snapped, the ball is kicked, and it's wide left. So Gary Anderson's perfect season, that came to an end. The Atlanta Falcons tied the game and they win in overtime with a field goal whose man, his last name is also Anderson. So we lose the game. That is the only team in NFL history to be 15 and one and not win the Super Bowl. Yes, that is our claim to fame. And it is probably the number one most awful moment in Viking fan history. And it is actually in the top five of NFL playoff chokes. Not jokes, but chokes. So, giving you that a little insight, I guess, into what it's like to be a Minnesota Vikings fan. We just really have lost that hope and that confidence. So this summer, we are talking about Heroes of Hope. Not like my Vikings, um, but heroes in the Bible that pointed us to the hope that we have in Jesus. And Today we are talking about Peter. So we know that Peter was one of Jesus' disciples. We know that he was a fisherman. And we know that he loved the Lord very passionately with his whole heart. We also know that Peter struggled. Um, Jesus was walking on the water out to the disciples while they were on a boat. And you know they said, Lord, if it's you, you know, Peter said, tell me to come to you. And so the Lord said, come to me, Peter. And Peter starts walking, he gets out of the boat, he starts walking on the water. But as soon as the wind starts whipping and he feels that on his face and he feels the water on his feet, he panics. He takes his eyes off of Jesus and he sinks, right? So the Lord comes to his rescue. And then after Jesus' arrest, Peter denied Jesus three times. And Jesus had warned Peter that this was gonna happen and Peter's like, oh no, I will never do that to you, Jesus. So when the rooster crowed for that third time, Peter wept bitterly. He felt so, so badly that he had betrayed Jesus, the man that he loved. But Jesus forgave Peter. Jesus told Peter that he was going to be the foundation, the rock, the cornerstone on which the church was built. And Peter was so instrumental in all that he did to lead people to Jesus, to point people to that cross. And so Jesus used Peter, even with all of his faults, to be one of those heroes of the Bible. But we do know that the biggest hero in the Bible is definitely Jesus, right? He gives us that hope and it's that confident expectation in his faithfulness that he has always fulfilled his promises, right? He, he was faithful in the past, he is faithful today, and he will be faithful tomorrow regardless of what we do and how we act. So it's that hope that gives us that ability to trust in him. It's that hope that gives us strength to get through things. It's that hope 
that takes away fears and anxieties and it fills us up with peace and joy. My Minnesota Vikings can't give me that hope, can't give me that confidence, but Jesus can. And Jesus used Peter too as that tool to, to bring many, many people to Christ. And he's going to use you and I also for that very same purpose. So this week, when you're out and about, um, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus because he is that hope that is going to get us through these very tough times that we are going through right now. He is the one that's going to bring us together and he is the one that is going to give us peace Fill us with love and joy. So fold your hands and pray with me. Father, thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for giving us that hope, that confident expectation in your faithfulness. You have always kept your promises and we thank you for that. We pray right now for just that peace to fill us up, for love to overflow, and just for the unity that you bring. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for this day. And all God's children said, amen. You have a great day, a very blessed week, and I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.